John's Epistle to the Elect Lady The Elect Lady 2 John 1-2 The Elder unto the Elect Lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth, for the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. The Elder, a mature spiritual leader. John is an apostle to the nation of Israel, and an elder. The Elect Lady The Kingdom Church John is writing to they are the elect that serve God in getting the gospel of the kingdom out to Israel in the last days. Matthew 24 verses 22 to 31 And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs, and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Luke 18 verse 7 And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. 1 Peter 1 verse 2 Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace, be multiplied. Her children, those members of the church that was dispersed in Acts 8. 2 John 13 below. Whom I love in the truth, the truth is that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Matthew 16 verse 18 And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 3 John 1 verse 1, The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever, once they enter their earthly kingdom these kingdom saints will never again doubt that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. 2 John 3 Grace be with you, mercy, and peace, from God the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Grace be with you, mercy, and peace. Again, notice the difference in John's use of the words grace and peace. The word mercy is inserted in between them because they will need God's mercy face in the time of Jacob's trouble. In truth and love, John also adds the words in truth and love to grace, mercy, and peace. The truth is that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. John is writing to a people going through the tribulation period that will need mercy to endure unto the end of God pouring out his wrath on this Christ-rejecting world. Just like he has with all his saints in any age, he gives them the grace to get through the fire. But once the dispensation of grace has passed at the rapture, God's will then begin to make his enemies his footstool. Psalm 110 verse 1 A Psalm of David The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. 2 John 4-5 I rejoiced greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, Lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. John 13 verse 34 I found of thy children walking in truth, they believed that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God, a commandment from the Father, that we love one another. This meant they were to show others they loved them by sacrificing for them if they had a need. John 13 verse 34 A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. John begged the members of this church to keep walking in truth, by loving one another sacrificially, as Christ loved them. 2 John 6 And this is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that, as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. Love, is walking after his, the Father's, commandments. If they are to manifest their faith by their works in the tribulation period, they will need to love their brethren and give a cup of cold water to someone in need, or a place to sleep. If they are in jail, they should visit them, just as Jesus taught them to do. 2 John 7 For many deceivers are entered into the world, who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Many deceivers are entered into the world, Satan is the opposite of love, 
and he has his deceivers going out into the world to dilute and to pollute the word of God by claiming that Jesus is not the Christ, the Son of the living God, an Antichrist. Those who say Jesus is not the Christ, God manifest in the flesh, is a deceiver and an Antichrist, because they have pledged that they are aligned with Satan, and they will share his destiny in the lake of fire. 2 John 8 Look to yourselves, that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Look to yourselves, they were to examine themselves, so that they would receive a full reward. We in the body of Christ do not have works as a part of our salvation. Paul said in Romans 11 verse 6, And if by grace, then is it no more of works. No more of works implies that works accompanied salvation under the law. Lose not those things which we have wrought, the works that Israel did for God under the law, that we receive a full reward. Matthew 5 verse 12, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Matthew 6 verses 1 and 4, 6, 18, Take heed that ye do not your alms before men, to be seen of them, otherwise ye have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret himself, shall reward thee openly. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Matthew 10 verse 41, He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward, and he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Matthew 16 verse 27, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels and then he shall reward every man according to his works. 2 John 9, Whosoever transgresseth, and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. The doctrine of Christ, is the teaching that Jesus, who is a man, is also the Anointed One, the Messiah, the Son of God, and that God came in the flesh, Emmanuel. He is God with us. Read John 15 verses 1 to 10 and Matthew 1 verse 23. 2 John 10 to 11, If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. For he that biddeth him God speed is a partaker of his evil deeds. This verse is primarily speaking to tribulation saints, but it is a practical thing for us to follow today as well. 2 John 12-13, Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you, and speak face to face, that our joy may be full. The children of thy elect sister, greet thee. Amen. John wanted to come and see this church that had formed after the scattering at the persecution of Stephen in Acts 8. John ends this epistle to one elect lady, church, telling them that their sister church in Jerusalem salutes, says hello. Notice the word elect is used in this book twice. That your joy may be full. John 15 verse 11, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. John 16 verse 24, Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name, ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. 1 John 1 verse 4, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. The children of thy elect sister greet thee. A church is addressed as the elect lady in verse 1, and now her elect sister is mentioned. These are two kingdom churches. The elect sister is the church which was at Jerusalem. The elect lady and her children were those to whom this epistle was written to. Jewish believers in Asia Minor, Turkey, most likely. There are seven end-time churches written to by John mentioned in Revelation chapters 2 and 3 and in 22 verse 16. The word elect is used by some to teach their false doctrine that God elects most people to go to hell, and that there is nothing they can do about it. They use the word elect, devoid of its biblical definition and context, to do so. The word elect is used only four times in the Old Testament, and they are all found in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 42 verse 1, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him, he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Isaiah 45 verse 4, For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name, I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Isaiah 65 verses 2 and 22, I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good, after their own thoughts. They shall not build, and another inhabit, they shall not plant, and another eat, 
for as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. In Isaiah 42 verse 1 Isaiah calls the Messiah God's elect and also calls him God's servant. In Isaiah 45 verse 4 Israel is called his elect as well as in both verses in chapter 65 and both passages refer to God's elect as being his servants. From the whole Old Testament, we learn from these four verses that both Israel and her Messiah are called God's elect, and to be elect, they must be God's servants also. The Gospels are all about Christ, God's elect servant, coming to Israel, God's elect servants, while they were still under the law of Moses to redeem them that were under the law. Galatians 4 verse 4. Matthew uses the word elect three times as does Mark, and each is a duplicate verse from the other gospel, telling us the same thing. They are all directed to Israel, God's elect servant, going through the tribulation period as you can see in Matthew 24 verses 22 and 24 and 31. Matthew 24 verses 22 and 24, 31, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. For there shall arise false Christs, and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Luke only uses the word elect once in chapter 18 and verse 7, which is talking about the judgment at the end of the tribulation period of those who had persecuted his elect, the believing remnant of Israel. The word elect is used by Paul only five times in his epistles. Romans 8 verse 33 is a reference to God's elect as being unchargeable, which means you cannot lay a charge against them because they are all under the blood of Christ. Colossians 3 verse 12, Paul is telling the Colossians to do as the elect do. 2 Timothy 2 verse 10 is a reference to Israel and the remnant according to the doctrine of election. 2 Timothy 5 verse 21 says, elect angels. In Titus 1 verse 1, the term God's elect, is a reference to saints in the dispensation of grace today. How are we elect today? We are elect because we are in Christ, God's elect. The word elect is mentioned in 1 Peter as he writes to the Jews scattered in the first century from the Jerusalem church at the persecution that arose surrounding Stephen. See 1 Peter 1 verse 2 and in 2 colon 6, where it is referencing God's Son as in Isaiah 42 verse 1. Lastly, it is mentioned in this epistle, and it is a reference to two separate churches, one that John is writing to, and the other one that he is writing from in Jerusalem. Nowhere in scripture is the word elect used to teach that God elects to send one group to heaven, and the other group to hell all because God is sovereign and can do what he wants. God is sovereign, but he is also just, and he will not send anyone to hell who will believe the gospel of grace. You could look up the word election, and elected, and elects, but you won't find the unconditional election doctrine in those verses either. The only verse out of the 26 verses that you could use totally void of its context to teach that God elects some to go to heaven and some to go to hell is Romans 9 verse 11, which teaches something altogether different. Context, context, context. Is Romans 9 verse 12 in the Bible? It's in mine. My Bible first of all tells me that the context is Israel. Try reading the chapter from the beginning. All it says is that the elder, Esau, shall serve the younger, Jacob. There is that dirty word associating the elect and election to servants and service. When was the quote in Romans 9 verse 13 said by God? Was it before Esau and Jacob were born? No. It is in Malachi 3 verse 2 almost 1,000 years after their death, and the statement is made by God, because the one son despised his birthright. Malachi 3 verse 2, But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. It was way after the fact that he rejected his birthright for some pottage that God said he hated the one and loved the other. One really wanted the birthright. That sounds like whosoever wills to me.